Hi everyone, welcome to the QA Ops channel. I'm Rafael Lima, and in this video, we're going to continue learn a little bit more about uh, Unix. And today, we're going to be talk about the different options for listing and how you can set up alias. Right. So this is very important because we can actually now start having permanent changes in our in our Unix terminal. So if you haven't watched any of the videos related to the to to Unix on how we set up a terminal in, in on, on your Windows and how you set up Git and the basics of Unix that you have been covering so far. I'm going to post the playlist here so you can go over those videos. Right? So let's start here. I have a my terminal here. Uh, as I discussed the last video, this is a ZSH terminal which has a little bit more functions named Bash. But I'm going to move to my bash one, so uh, we can have a we can be in the same page, uh, you and I. So the first thing that we covered a little bit last video was ls or listing uh, files and in, in anything in your computer. So this is ls, right? So if I go to my home folder and I do ls, there is there are some some stuff there, right? So uh, but only ls it's 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 on a horizontal display it's hard you don't know the the name of you don't know the permissions of the file you don't know the size it's hard to read uh, it, it, it's although it's on alphabetical order but it's on a column format so it's it's not very easy to to read right? so there are few commands that uh, help with with uh, making a different visualization of ls so the i'm going to go into mun ls which is the manual for directory right so here you have a bunch of options that you can go over and you can you can play with it right so i'm going to be covering a few it's ls dash l for listing right if we go to the mun dash l here on the bottom is list in long format right so ls list so we can see now that's listing and it's giving me a bunch of information related to to the user to this number here which is the size in bytes uh, when the file was created and this also information here that's our permission so i'm going to go over those right so, but then it's still it's still hard to understand what is this number, right? So, if you have a big file, so what what is the actual number that is? So, there is another option that we can put uh, for human readable, right? Uh, ls dash l for still listing and h, which now instead of displaying the bytes values, right? We don't have the if I just do ls. We have, let me clear here, we have these values here. When I do ls, we now have a the actual the actual size value, let's say size type. So here we have bytes, we have k bytes, and it would be m for MB for meg and GB for gigabyte. So now it's easy for you to understand what is the actual size of of those, right? Awesome. And what are these, right? So this is my user who, who created the file. And what are these, right? So we we covered in the last video that these are directories, and the ones that doesn't have D are files. So you can actually know uh, what are directors and what are files but the rest are permissions so right uh, so we have here read permission w for write permission x for execute permission and is divided into the owner of the file whoever created the file then is divided into the group that the person belong whoever also in, is in that group can also do those those same uh permission and this is the public so you can see that here on my home this is my home rafael lima 
the majority of the file it's only readable I only have permissions for my user whoever is not my uh, my user can uh, don't have access right so they may have access to the public and that's a public folder and some other stuff right but going over uh, going over a, a more detailed approach here is uh, I'm going to be posting these on the description of the video as well but then we have here what I what I say the first one is the owner the group and the world the public permission and here he explains to you the read, the write, the execute, how you can modify those, uh, what are the values that you can modify. It's, it's, it's on a number format. I'm not going to go over today on how you can change, how you can use the CH, CH mode, uh, how you can use this, this command CH mode to modify the permissions. But here you have everything that you need to know how you can change the permissions and to what value you want to change. Right? Great. So going back here, we have, uh, let me remove this stranger thing here because it's going to be awesome. So here we have, we have the listing, right? So, and I showed you, but then the, on the Unix, you have also, uh, hidden files, which, is, which are the dots. And you don't see it here, right? But if I do ls dash la, is going to have a bunch of dot files here, and all of these are hidden files, right? Usually are setup files that you don't need to show. But again, I didn't put the h, so it's not human readable. So let me put the h. The order doesn't really matter. So now I have the dot files, and I also have the 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 h file so i have list i have three parameters l h and a right so but then it's you don't want to be typing all the time ls dash lha or lh it's too much typing right it's, it's not that much typing when you are executing once but when you are executing on a daily basis it gets boring for you to be typing not on a daily basis but only you know, a lot of times during your day so uh it's going to take if you have a a shortcut it's going to take you less time and when you sum all of those times that you are saving then you have a bunch of saving of times being saved right so there is a command on unix called uh alias so let me do man alias which is for a a alias it's it's a shortcut or, or an, uh, would be like a nickname or another another way of doing the same thing right so here you have a description of what, what the alias do but pretty much what i how you use it is uh, i do alias and I type the alias that I want. So one very popular is LL for listing and with the H. Right? You list and it's already human readable. And you put equals. It cannot have a space between, otherwise it won't work. Uh, I put uh, single uh, single quotes or double quotes and LS and I give the command that I actually wanted to execute. And the command is LS dash LH. Now, right, when I do LL, it's, it's there. But again, this is only for this terminal, right? So if I open a new terminal and I do bash and then I'll type LL, it's not there, right? Because this was only for this terminal. LL, it works, great. If I do type LL, now it says LL is an alias for LS dash LH, right? So this is the first alias that we are creating. Now I'm going to create another one. I'm going to give LA. And if I don't, I'm going to show what happens if I don't put the space. In this one, I'm going to put LS with the, with the hidden files approach. See, it doesn't recognize the separation, right? The space, so we cannot have space. Now, when I do LA, I have the same human readable uh, format, the listing format, along with my hidden files. So now I have two aliases, LL 
and LA. So it's much more simple to much simpler to do LL instead of LS. It's it's much more fast. It's first incredibly faster, right? But I don't want that to be every time that I open a terminal, I'm going to my terminal, I, I, I'm going to need to create the alias. That, that's, not, that's not easy, right? If you have 10, 20, 30 alias, doesn't matter how many, you don't want to be typing all of those every time. You want to be a, a one thing, right? One time thing. If you go to the wiki, I'm also going to be posting this on uh, on the terminal on the on the video. We have here a a possibility of how we can deal with this. So bash and and any any shell scripting language, you can have a profile in your terminal that is going to execute every time you enter that profile or every time you open the terminal. And you can have your own setup there. So here, there, there is a difference between when you open an interactive login shell, when you open, when you exit in the shell, when it's interactive with that is not a login shell. So it's going to tell which file is going to read first. So if you go into interactive login shell, that's the shell that when you open it or when you log in, uh, when you try to log into a, a, a server, is going to ask for a password. In my case, it's not asking for a password, so it's an interactive shell. That means that I can interact with it, but uh, it's not a login shell. So the first one that is going to execute here says that it's going to read the this file here that I don't want to be changed because this is not a file uh, on my home. This is not like a, a customized file. And it's going to read this, which you're going to do some setup, and then it's going to read my home file. And this home file, I know it's home because it has the tilde command. The tilde command is a shortcut for my home, my home folder. So it's going to read this dot bash rc. So let's give it a look, right? So if if I wa if this was a login shell, then you 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 would read the dot bash profile, then dot bash login, then dot bash profile. Then dot, then dot profile. So you'd go into this order. So let's give it a try. So I'm going to open, uh, I'm going to create a file. I don't have the bash here. So this is on my home. It needs to be on your home. So I don't have bash here. I have other ones, but I'm going to create this file. Touch dot bash rc. Now I create it. It needs to be a, a hidden file, which is the dot. So if I do now, uh, LA, I'm going to see here bash RC. It's right here. I just created. Awesome. So now I'm going to edit this file, right? So I'm going to use VI bash RC. It's just a simple uh, editor for Unix. You don't have to use it. You can use any. This is a regular file. You can use uh, any any editor that you like. Right, so I'm going to give the alias that we just created. So it's, I'm going to say alias ll, and I'm going to say ls h. I'm going to put another line la, and I'm going to say ls dash lah. Great. So now if I leave the file and I save it, uh, I can now go into another terminal. When I open bash, what happened? Did I delete it? When I open bash, now I have LL, right? I didn't have it before when I open a new one, right? If I open another one, and I go into bash, I have LA, I have LL. So that's, it's reading that file, that specific file. So let me edit that file again. And now I'm going to give it a little bit more commands, right? So uh, some aliases. So remember that on the last video, I we talk about grep, right? And on grep, 
I could do grep dot bash rc uh, and what I'm looking for ll it found but I need to put dash dash color in order for it to be to highlight whatever whatever it found so what I'm going to do now I'm going to put this as a permanent option for me now I'm going to say alias and I'm going to override the grab command I'm going to create a, a alias called grab and what this grab is going to do is going to do grab dash dash color so I don't have to type dash dash color anymore I'm going to remove this and I'm going to also show you how you can actually read because that command uh, without having to open a new terminal right because if I try to do grab the same grab command here grab ll dot bash rc is not going to display right but if I open a new terminal I do bash and I do grab ll dot bash rc it's there right because when you open a new terminal it reads that file but in the one that uh, that you haven't read it yet because uh, it was already open it's not there but you don't have to be you can you can say reread that file so you, it's a command called source so if I source the bash rc now my grab command ll bash rc works so I can use uh, the source to reload the content right because the terminal is going to be the, the terminal is going to the, the bash is going to execute the configuration file the setup file only once when it enters the terminal after that either you're going to have to go into another terminal or force it read that file again which is the source right but typing all the time source dot bashrc source dot something it's time consuming right I'm I'm, I'm kind of lazy so what I like to do like I have an alias for source so I called resource and it's source home dot bashrc why I gave the home because the bash rc is at my home and if I try to execute that command if I don't put home if I don't put home here and I execute that command in another folder that I am it's going to try to look for a bash rc file in the folder that I am which is not going to work I need to put the folder that the bash rc is on so this command is going to be is going to work regardless of the folder I am in right so if I try to execute resource it's not going to work but if I do source bash rc and now I do resource it found that command I also another thing that I also like to do is to have um, alias for folders right for me to go into the QA ops folder it's home documents personal QA ops uh, code QA ops it's a lot of typing right so every time you need to type that thing so what I'm what I usually do too is I have the alias for uh going to specific folders the folders that i usually go into uh into more often not every time i i, I don't create alias to every folder but what i usually do i create alias for for the parent folder so i didn't i'm, I'm not going to create a folder for every project uh, on the qa ops but I just created a folder for the QA ops one and from there it's easy for me to choose which folder I want so I'm now I'm going to where I am uh, I'm letting go to my home QA ops does not work but if I do resource now I am at my home QA ops works I am at my home so we just tested the 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 QA ops alias and the resource alias right so now on my QA ops I can now 
visualize everything that I have there. I don't have to create a alias for every one of those, it's going to be too much. But if I create the alias for the QA ops, it already saves me a lot of time. So this is basically what I wanted to show you. Uh, one thing that's important to note is that it's very important for you to get used to the actual commands, right? Because you don't want to be a person that only knows how to work use Unix on your computer because you have those alias. And sometimes you, you might be working on another, another person's computer. You might be uh, working on a Docker um, machine, and a Docker machine is ephemeral, meaning that it's going to be destroyed uh, um, very soon. In every new Docker machine, you're going to have to set up your, your alias. Doesn't make sense. If you log into a Unix server very often, the same Unix server, uh, it makes sense for you to have a, the, your alias there, but uh, if you have, uh, if you, if if it's a machine that's not regularly, a machine that you don't log in regularly, or use regularly, it doesn't make sense to create alias every time, right? So every now and then you're going to have to type the whole command. Of course, uh, as as you get used to the alias, you're going to type the alias. Uh, without even realizing it. And sometimes you're going to realize that that computer does not have your alias because it's not your computer. So, but then it's important for you to know, and that happens to me a lot, uh, really easy to type LL, then it says command not found. Then I realize it's not my computer and then uh, I can type the full command. And that's important for you to know how, how these full commands work, right? So. Uh, and one thing that you can do is when you type in an alias, you you may, you you mentalize the actual command. So ll, you when you're typing ll, you are actually mentalizing ls dash lh. This way, it's going to be easy for you to memorize, right? Uh, I'm not saying that you should memorize all of the command, possible commands because that's not viable. You're going to memorize the commands most used, right? And the ones that I'm showing here is very basic commands, and there are the ones that you should memorize. You should be able to list without alias. You should be able to create a file, create a folder, delete a file, move a file, copy a file, go into a file, display a file, filtering a file. So you should be able to do all of those that I'm showing. And of course, as you as you start using, getting more used, you're going to learn new commands but the one that you're going to stick in your mind is are the ones that you that you are uh often uh, you often use but you have the the manual in the unix you have the internet it's going to make it easier for you to get to remember some commands but the most basic you should you should retain those right thank you for watching if you like it please uh give the thumbs up and subscribe so you can receive the the video the next the, the notification for the next videos which is going to be uh we're going to be in, in adding uh, advancing a little bit more. Next one, I think I'm going to be talking about symbolic link, which is going to uh, make it easy to do some specific setup and configuration in your computer, and, and it's going to change how a little bit how you use it, right? Thank you for watching.